In 2003, scientists charted the length, the breadth of human genomes, uh, and the exact, which is the exact sequence of humans' 3 billion letters of DNA code, all grouped into 20,000 to 25,000 genes. And that is remarkable to me that we, we can know about this stuff, and we were totally ignorant of it just a couple of decades ago. And to me, it's just another example of the evidence for God uh, that he created this tremendously immense thing uh, that we're just discovering at this point. But now we can actually pinpoint genetic factors that cause or contribute to cause certain diseases. And formerly, we were just ignorant. We knew, we've known for a long time that there were certain disorders that were hereditary, but we really didn't know why. We also don't know, know why things affect people differently. Uh, they give warnings about smoking cigarettes and you could get lung cancer in 10 years or 15 years. And yet my dad smoked for probably 75 years and he lived to be 90 and he never got lung cancer. Uh, that, that's hard to imagine that when some people would get it at a relative short period of time. But now we're working on altering genes to affect cures uh, and or treat or overcome or control genetic makeup and uh, scary things like changing the, the human uh, genome uh, into superhumans and things like that. I'm sure there are some scientists that have no restraints on how far they'd like to go. But science has clearly outpaced conventional morals. Um, parents with deadly genetic diseases, do they have a duty to warn their children? Um, do they have a duty if they know that they have that uh, deadly genetic disease, do they have a duty not to have children? These are all questions that we begin to ask that we didn't have to ask a couple of decades ago. Uh, is altering somebody's uh, genes, is that playing God? Are we doing things we shouldn't even be doing? no matter how much good it might do. Is it wrong for parents to do preconception genetic testing and then doing embryo selection to avoid a disabled child? Well, certainly the latter part of that, I, I do agree that there's, that's immoral, but what about the testing itself? Uh, does this discriminate against disabled people? How do dis disabled people today with these hereditary type diseases, how do they feel that science is trying to eliminate people like them? Not, not the ones, of course, that are already alive, but ever having people like them again. And uh, how about using genetic testing to select a child's gender? or the color of hair that we want them to have, or their athletic ability, or their academic abilities. Uh, these are all real scary things when we talk about genes. And uh, cells fundamental components, the DNA makes up the chemical coding that directs and cons uh, the construction and development of the operation of the cells. And uh, Again, stuff that we had no idea of not too long ago. The classic double helix uh, enclo uh, encodes all instructions required to make and maintain an organism. Uh, organism's entire complement of DNA is known as the genome, and human genomes have 30 billion base parts. That's, or, or base pairs. Uh, and that's just amazing to me. Some genetic mutations are acquired. Some probably happen randomly. Some may happen because of exposure to noxious agents. But certainly, we know that some mutations are hereditary. And, and, uh, and most, uh, most uh, cases, these diseases are not caused from a single gene defect but many gene defects that work together to cause this uh, bad result. So one thing I want you to know, and I want you to recall, is genetic testing is now available for over 1,000 diseases. And that's a, that's a positive thing to know about that. And they can take those, do those tests with a, a very small amount of blood or tissue. 
So why do we do these tests? Uh, in your textbook on page 564, there's a list of about five things that uh, uh, we're doing genetic testing for. First of all, we have newborn screenings for the uh, for early treatment of certain diseases or problems that need immediate attention even when the baby is quite young. And some of these, at least one of them are, is mandatory, the PKU, uh, which is a disorder that may cause mental retardation if it's not treated immediately with a special diet. So there's that. And then a second reason is carrier testing. Um, uh, autosomal recessive disorder, ARD, uh, that's really no problem if somebody has that and they're married to somebody who does not have that. But if two people have that and they have a baby, then there's a great increased chance that the offspring is going to have PKU, cystic fibrosis, sickle cell uh, problems, or Tay-Sachs. And so certainly you want to know that. And if both uh, the husband and wife have that condition, they certainly should give serious thought to not having children uh, other than those that they adopt. Another one is predictive testing. A test before symptoms occur in a genetic disease that is one of those that shows up later in life. You might want to have that test. If your father just died of Huntington's disease and you're 20 years old, you might want to have that test and find out if you are going to have Huntington's as well. And the test will show, in, in terms of uh, Huntington, it will show if you have that defect and it's almost 100% if it's positive that you will have that, uh, that disease. And then sometimes you want to find out other things that uh, might tell you if you predispos uh, had, have a predisposition for something uh, that you may or may not get. For example, blood clotting disorders like a factor V Leiden. Um, I was tested for that. Uh, my daughter had a blood clot in her leg and I had pulmonary embolisms back in 2013. So I was tested for it and I don't have it. So that probably means my wife has factor V uh, Leiden and she's never had any blood clotting problems. So she probably has that genetic marker or factor, but it's never caused her any problems, but it was passed on to our daughter. The fourth is a diagnostic testing to confirm or to rule out a genetic disorder. And then the fifth one is prenatal testing and this is one, of course, that is very um, offensive to me. And that's where, uh, you know, you do a, a prenatal testing, uh, an, amyos uh, an amyocentesis is an example to uh, check the condition of the unborn baby. And that would be one that would probably show Down syndrome, sickle cell, Tay-Sachs, and those kinds of things a whole bunch of different ones you can test for. And then, of course, the unfortunate thing is that uh, people typically, well, 90% of people who get a diagnosis of Down syndrome uh, murder their unborn baby. And then another one, actually the sixth one, is pre-implantation genetic dis, uh, diagnosis test. And, of course, that's when they check the embryos. They are, they're, they're doing a in vitro fertilization they check the embryos and those with a genetic defect. The book uses the word screen out. Of course, you know, we know that what they're talking about is destroying the emb embryo. And because they only want mutation-free embryos to be transplanted. So pre-implantation uh, pre genetic uh, tests are very costly and usually only done when there's a high probability of some kind of serious disorder.